Welcome back. As you know, we're talking about all things kids this month. And one of the things that we don't want to miss for sure is mental health and the importance of addressing mental health issues with children when they arise and through valuable and knowledgeable resources. Our next guest, Mara James, had her own experience in 2014 where she had a manic episode and was ultimately diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Now, Mara has taken that opportunity and of course the learning that came with it to advance the conversation around mental health and children's mental health, especially she has established the Extraordinary Lives Foundation or ELF, which I absolutely love. <laughs> the acronym itself is worth knowing, which includes the popular Hugs for Life Healing Center, which is a program offered by ELF that um, bridges the gap between medical professionals and holistic healers. And she has also created the character Piggy Bear, who I'm sure will be paying us a visit. Piggy Bear is books and plush and the opportunity for promotion of uh, mental health awareness and prevention. And it also provides children and parents with resources that they can use to address um, mental health across all areas that are available. So Mara, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me today. It's a pleasure. So take us take us a little bit through your story. I try to keep the introduction relatively short because nobody wants to hear it from me. Everybody wants to hear it from you. Sure. So um, I was what I thought was a happy-go-lucky uh, individual. And then eight years ago, um, at the age of 48 years old, out of the blue, I experienced a manic episode and was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. It was also a very big spiritual awakening. So um, it was a beautiful and scary uh, month of May, 2014. And I, um, at some point I just, um, things were getting out of control and I knew I needed medication. And that I met, I met with a psychiatrist and a therapist. I was heavily medicated, never locked up in the hospital, thankfully. And then I was introduced to a team of amazing healers, one after another, after another. And after a year and a half of hard, hard work, I was able to be weaned off my medication. And that's where I joke around that I went from medication to meditation. And that's when I was inspired to start the foundation because I had firsthand experience with mental health challenges is, you know, in addition to my family members having their own, going through it myself um, gave me entirely new insight. Um, and then I realized that there are gifts associated with mental health challenges and the greater the gift, the greater the curse. And if we could help with the gifts and mitigate the curse, um, the darkness, we could really transform lives. So was that something, was that a conversation? You talk a lot about how it opened the conversation with family and friends and other people who had had similar kinds of experiences with that. Was that a conversation that you had had prior to your own experience or was that something that completely shifted? Yeah, completely shifted. So um, I used to run my husband's OBGYN office in Laguna Beach, and he would always have patients that um, he would have them go speak to me because we had a child that was on the you know diagnosed with Asperger's and ADHD at the age of six years old. So I was always able to guide them. Um, but that was the extent of my conversations. And then after this, it brought on a whole new conversation about more severe challenges. And and you also had children at that at that point when you had your own episode. How did you manage the situation with them? Um, it was challenging. Luckily, we had, um, I guess, a nanny for me, or we had somebody kind of hanging around helping us. Um, at that time, um, my kids were around thirteen and 16 and 20. So it was, they were older. So um, it was okay. It was made a little easier. One was off of college. Actually, it was interesting because my oldest son was a freshman at UC Santa Barbara during my actual episode, which happened in May, which 
ironically or divine synchronicity is mental health awareness month. Um, yeah. So during that is that's when the Isla Vista shooter, if you remember the shooting occurred and the 22 year old killed six people and took his whole, his own life. And that is when God, the universe, whatever you want to call it said to me, you're going to work with children like that because my middle son, God bless him. And he's such a success story at 23 but there was a really big darkness that came over him at 16. And thankfully for my hugs healers, we were, they were able to really um, help him through that darkness. And I mean, when I say he's successful to me, successful just means happy. That's all I'm looking for. Okay. You know, I don't yeah. care monetarily, but um, yeah, so that was very, that was really um, an interesting time. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like it was really interesting. And of course, the foundation was an outgrowth of that. And, and we always talk about, you know, your greatest, you know, breakdown is usually your greatest breakthrough. And you are quite a living example of that. So tell us more about Extraordinary Lives Foundation. So the foundation's mission is to improve children's mental health and wellness. And the reason I was inspired to start it in 2015 is because my healing journey was focused so much of it, probably still is eight years later, on my three to seven year old hurt inner child. And I realized um, by working with all these healers and therapists and et cetera, et cetera, that um, our inner voice um, starts when we're three to seven, from that three to seven year old period. And, but there are ways to heal it, change it. And also for me personally, as I healed my heart, my brain chemistry changed. And that's when I was able to be weaned off medication. Um, people don't realize, they think, oh, I'm born with this and I'm stuck with it. And that is just a limiting belief. It is not true. And um, yeah, so I back to your question. So I was inspired to start it um, to encourage people to speak out about their challenges because looking at the challenges as a gift. So then my husband's patients now started coming in when their child was bipolar, forget, you know, on the spectrum. And I'm like, congratulations, like high five because they're gifted. I experienced it myself. You know, in Africa, if you're diagnosed with bipolar disorder, you're, you're as a child, you're given to the shaman to work with to bring out your gifts. Um, which luckily for my daughter, who's now 21, for the past six years, she's been working with a female shaman and now her gifts have come out. Um, so this, so with all of the healers that I use personally for me and my family, that's what the healers that we use, plus more for the Hugs for Life Healing Center, where Hugs stands for Healing, Understanding, Growth, and Spirituality, the H-U-G-S. And right now we're virtual, which is beautiful because we're not limited to having clients or healers locally in Orange County. Um, and in addition, um, it's funny, but during my episode, I became obsessed with the stuffed animal, the stuffed pig. And I'm like, power the pig, pig's going to save the world. And I'm at my daughter's softball games with the stuffed animal. Animal. And she's like, okay, mom, you know, and my therapist and my husband, I'm like, why are you obsessed with the pig? And I'm like, I don't know, but isn't she cute? And I'm like, and then if a dull can hug her, they lost their inner child. Lo and behold, I told this woman about this pig and I showed her piggy. She goes, oh, it looks more like a bear than a pig. And I'm like, thank you. We're going to call him piggy bear. Hi. <laughs> and this is piggy bear. And it's just, you know, piggy bear's ears, if you notice, are in the shape of hearts because we teach kids and adults to listen from our heart, not from our judgmental head. And I like, I like to say like piggy bear is kind of the uh, incar reincarnation of Mr. Rogers and like kind of like a spiritual guru, like just teaching beautiful, loving values. In addition to learning how to identify emotions and do deep belly breathing to calm the nervous system. And then to do piggy bear self hug for self love. And if you hold this for 20 seconds, it releases oxytocin. So, so many loving, simple exercises that are really transformative. And you've written two books or I Let's say Piggy Bear has two books out under yeah, your exactly. so, so far we have a list of about 10 or 20 more but we need to get funding um to write them and Piggy Bear just so you know is owned by the foundation so any sales goes directly to the foundation um we have an amazing publisher so right now we have the power of Piggy Bear and Piggy Bear's power of happiness and uh God willing next year we could raise the funds to um 
produce and pay, you know, the, the um, illustrator for Piggy Bear's Power of Love and Piggy Bear's Power of Emotions. But serious, and the list just goes on. We also have um, a deck of Piggy Bear Power Cards. It's an adorable deck of cards, 44 cards that help to empower children emotionally and physically. And all of the items are available on Amazon and our website as well. And um, yeah, we're working on making videotapes and we just want to be able to share all the things that I have learned um, with families and with their children to really, I mean, so many people don't realize that they've had, you know, a trauma in their life when they were younger and they're living like they, they're on a cellular level. They don't feel safe. They feel, um, you know, they have PTSD and they don't just need to medicate or do talk therapy. There's so much more that can be done. So how can people get involved or find you and and what do you really need? I mean, I know foundations are always fundraising. However, you also have other needs, I'm sure. Absolutely. Just so you know, so we are, um, I always joke around, my husband makes the money, I make the difference. So I volunteer my, my time full-time, but this is my heart and soul, right? So it's not work to me. We don't have any full-time employees. We have part-time, a few part-time staff that help us. But, um, you know, we're always looking for volunteers, uh, potential board members, always looking for funds and, um, you know, followers on our social media. Um, we're on Facebook under Extraordinary Lives Foundation, LinkedIn under Extraordinary Lives Foundation, and Instagram, which is at ELF, E-L-F for ELF, empowers with an S. Um, we have our website. People can get in touch with us through um, elfempowers.org. And we're just here, you know, if you, if anyone knows anybody that's suffering, um, we're here to help people. I mean, for, I'll give you like an example where my husband's always like, I'm perfect. I'm perfect. I'm like, yes, dear. Everybody in this world has work to do, but you are perfect. But he always wanted to get to the airport three or four hours early. And finally, my daughter, a few years ago, my daughter's like, dad, why don't you go to the airport? We'll meet you there. And he's like, no, it's okay. But he has this anxiety and it's making us crazy. And I'm like, I'm not getting there four hours early. He's like, you're self-centered. I'm like, no, I'm really not. So we returned home and thankfully he agreed to see the hypnotherapist. Therapist, and they realized that he took on this energy from his father. And like that, the, the hypnotherapist released it. He calls me the next day. He goes, I just did a delivery. And instead of running to the office, I'm going to get a cup of coffee. And it was transformative. And he tells me, I don't know how it, cha how it changed me, but it did. And he refers his patients to me, his wife, the holistic healing navigator. So, I mean, any fear, any anxiety, sadness, shame, blame, guilt, um, a paranoia, all these emotions are healable. And that's what people don't know. Medication is great for stabilizing. Talk therapy does great, does good work, but there are just things that um, we hold, you know, there's, we hold um, emotions on an emotional, physical, cellular, and spiritual level. And these things can be healed. And this is for, and so even though your message is primarily for children, but you're treating and working with everyone. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, it's funny because the parent that will call me for the child, but the, and whoever calls is the first client. And I always say to the parent, and usually it's the mom, what is going on with the child that's reflecting things that you get to heal? And oh my gosh, if I knew what I know now, if I knew that back then, everything would have been different, but at least I could help others. You know, my son, um, these kids are being born different. They're empathic. They literally feel others' energy. So for example, we had a client that could not take a test in a large classroom because he felt everyone's energy, but he didn't know that. He just had anxiety. But when he was alone in the room, he was able to take a test, no problem. We had a six-year-old child that could not hug her parents and they felt devastated. And we explained to them that your child is an empath and she feels all of your love and it's too much for her little body. So it really changes the story because, you know, the schools want to put her on medications. She's six years old with anxiety, but it's not her own. They're feeling the, you know, the emotions of others, the energy of others. And of course, you know, as parents, when we could really learn, you know, I can't just say go meditate because it's so much more than that people like I could never just sit down and meditate they're just you know I had too much PTSD that I didn't know at uh, you know at the time but when the parents can really help themselves to help their children it's transformative um, one of my healers has a son he was born fully autistic he's now in high school playing he's a catcher on the baseball team it's miraculous wow. and there's just things out there that people don't know about and that's what we're here really to introduce 
um, holistic healing to complement Western medicine. And of course, you know, teaching um, piggy bears tools to everybody, parents and children alike. And that is exactly our mission here at Good Day is to shine a light on amazing people doing amazing work. And so you are a perfect fit for us. And thank you so much, Mara James, for coming to share the Extraordinary Lives Foundation. I know our viewers are going to want more information. We will put elfempowers.org on the website and also on the screen here for everyone to see. If you need more information, you'll have an easy way to find Mara. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having, I would say me, but thank you for having us today. It's As Tigger said, you are amazing. <laughs> thank you, and we'll be right back. <laughs>